This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Constructive Deconstruction, everybody. Episode by my marker number 11. And uh, that's if I was actually smart and actually changed it up after we recorded last week's show. <laughs> Because I listened back, and I, when I finished editing for the for the most recent Thespian talk, I still had it late. I still had the Skype uh, thing labeled as eighty nine, but it was really episode ninety. So the episode is labeled properly as it's put up, but I called it eighty nine. So it's like a big derp yep. on me. <laughs> it's just eighty nine point two. There you go. <laughs> nice. Yes, and. And because I don't want to forget it this time, I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. That would be very important to know if this is your first show. Uh, <laughs> and my two co-hosts are Holly Christine and Misha Mayhem. Hello. Hi. Yes, I actually f- remembered to introduce my co-host this time. Yay. So if you didn't know us then, uh, before you know us now, you're yes. welcome, Internet. <laughs> Yes, and before we get started into this, uh, we actually have a mutual friend of all of us. Her name is Vega. She has been accepted into the school of her dreams and has got a bunch of scholarships and, and everything, but she still can't quite reach it there. That's where crowdsourcing comes in. She has been asking for help. Uh, she's offering uh, commissions, like yeah. depending on how much you give or what have you. From ten dollars all the way up to three hundred. Uh, ten being a sketch of anything, and three hundred being a graphic design for like a book cover mm-hmm. or a print, uh, like a flyer or whatever. So yeah, and she needs six, a little over sixty-six hundred, and she's almost at three thousand, which is awesome. Yes. Yay! So GoFundMe is where she is, and it's under her thing is help a college dream. Mm-hmm. So, and yeah. she does post regular updates to it on her Twitter, which is at uh, Viga, V-I-G-A. Yeah. So you can check out all the updates and get all the links there. And speaking of which, uh, I also have a, uh, have a thing as well. I've started up a Patreon page to kind of help fund everything. Everything is explained over there. It's basically me saying, I need help because the job market sucks for me. <laughs> yeah. So I need a little bit of help to keep things going because... You know, I eventually do want to get out of where I am. Need more streams. Yes, need more streams. <laughs> we also have a raffle going on as of this recording. $5 gets you a ticket, and we'll have a drawing on the 22nd of January. Woo-hoo. So so we have all of that for good prizes and everything, and, and all of that will be announced during the stream. But, um, but yeah, patreon.com slash gomer21xx is where you can go. I don't have much in the way of rewards but i'm going to be i'm going to try and work with some people see if we can't drum up some other stuff and i'll everything... donate another cookbook if you'd like there you go <laughs> <laughs> oh okay. well there you go yeah that's something we could talk about off air though mm. but uh yeah so you know give vega a hand please help me to <laughs> help us both achieve dreams and and actually <laughs> earn money actually have a living at this at what we want to do uh, which is ba- it's based pretty much what we're, we're what people on Patreon are doing really is it's like hey I, well, I need some help I need some support because I need a way to live somehow you know <laughs> and me personally I would love to make a living doing this <laughs> well and you're you're also you're in a it's not a completely terrible position because you do have a place to live and stuff so that's good this is true. And I think um, that is common I'm... among everybody on Patreon. We do have places to stay and everything. We just It's basically we just need a little bit of help. Yeah, understandable. Yeah, no. whether it's with equipment or what have you. Oh, God, equipment. Something is always breaking for everyone. Just cameras, especially <laughs> for, for me and Todd. Oh, yeah. It's but... terrible. And we need a monitor, so there's that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm having to... I'm still looking into getting a new microphone. I've been switching around headset mics for the past week or so. <laughs> yeah, Ben's dad sent him this the the headset I'm using for his birthday back in August, and it works really well. Yeah, and this one, the one I'm using now, is actually an older one. It's not that wireless one that has all the audio problems. I say this now. Yay. I say this now, and when I get to editing, you just watch this. It's going to be all this <laughs> stuff. So quick, knock on your head, knock on some wood. Yes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yeah. So, th- so 
with, with all of that out of the way, the ice is broken. And now we get to talk about people that I personally want to break. Stab in the face with a fork. Well, not just you. Lots of people want to well, yes. break them. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, yes. Oh, and we get to... I, I know we've brought up rape culture in previous shows. Possibly this one. Definitely on Thespian Talk. Yeah. Every show. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, I think we started out the first episode with it, and we just kind of mentioned it every time, somehow. Yeah, because it's a thing. It's a thing that needs to go away, and yeah. the, the more people are pointing it out, maybe the more people will understand that this is a bad thing, and not be, you know, not get ADD distracted by other things, you know, to the point to where they forget that this exists. So, for people who tune into the show and are like, oh, you're talking about it again? Yes, we're talking about it Damn again. Damn right. It's important. Yes. Yep. If you don't like it, TFB. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty yep. much. These are important things to discuss here. Oh, so what I found, and everybody's probably heard about this, so uh, you're going to hear about it again, is um, the hacker who helped expose the Steubenville rapist. This guy faces more prison time then the rapists themselves. Because hacking? Because apparently hacking is more of a crime than violating someone sexually. That's fucked up. I'm sorry, but wow. Yeah, it is really, really messed up. It is. It's like, no, 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 no. Okay, you can argue that hacking, you know, illegal hacking, sure, okay. You know, if, if there's a punishment for it, then... Let there be a punishment for it. Not ten fucking years when your illegal activity actually exposes an even more heinous illegal activity. So wait a minute. Let me get this straight. So if people would have, you know, if this person would have talked about it, not, like, and it wasn't online, it wasn't, had nothing to do with computers, they would get off scot-free. But because something involving hacking exposed them, wow, they, okay. Yeah, I think it, I think the authorities are just upset because this guy is just butted in a little bit too much on the NSA stick, NSA stick, or FBI or CIA or whichever government. They're all useless. I'm sorry, they just are. I. But continue. But yeah. Oh. And and the thing about Steubenville, for those who don't know, um, last you know August 2012, intoxicated teenage girl was a victim of terrifying and demuted and dehumanizing series of rapes by peers, by the way, more than one rape on her school's football team. And the idiots decided to take videos and pictures pretty much confessing what they've done. Which is stupid. Well, never mind. I'm not going to yeah. make that, that overgeneralization about football players. Never mind. Oh, we, we, might, we might end up going there. Okay, then if so, so then let, let it begin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I, cause that ties into one of the issues I have with this particular story. But, um, so they, they're, they're idiots to begin with by, by exposing their crimes. And as we've went through before on Thespian Talk, on other shows, you know, you should not do this. But if you're going to, be smart about this. I think the point of committing crimes is getting away with them. Yeah, don't don't ever let them find traces of the body. No, I'm kidding. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, that's pretty bitch. much it. And, <laughs> and and I feel dirty because now now there are going to be smarter rapists out there, and I feel dirty. <laughs> don't rape. No, because rapists are never smart. Good point. Okay, so okay, <laughs> you make me feel better. I feel better. Thank you. Oh, so ah, <laughs> uh, so yeah, it got spread around and. The New York Times had brought national spotlight to the case, and with it, of course, controversy. While the majority of onlookers expressed rage at the rapists, a portion of the commoners and news anchors alike shared sympathies with the accused rapists, some going so far as to blame the victim for getting drunk. Fox News? Uh, definitely. But I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure they weren't the only ones, because it seems like there was more than one. Wow, that was just a lucky guess. <laughs> yeah, it it doesn't say in the article I'm looking at, but I'm pretty sure Fox News was among them, just because yeah. I know Fox News well enough. Oh God, so the blame the victim mentality was already there, at least in some people, and and it is just, and anonymous is like, yeah, you know what? Um, we're gonna expose anyone who stood against the victim, 
you know, among the other contributions, the hackers accessed and defaced the football team's website with the video demanded an apology. And they also leaked a separate video, presumably from court evidence, of the football team making fun of the rape incident. Both, ha both hacks garnered national outrage toward the rapist and seemingly broken judicial system alike. Yeah, and um, when those rapists went to court, it, ca it came to find out that not only are they star football players, but I believe there was some kind of connection with higher-ups in the community. I want to say um, some kind of official, I want to say judge, but I could be wrong. Yeah, I think it was a judge. Yeah. Yeah, wow, these guys are definitely future uh, New England Patriots. I mean, what? <clears throat> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So, and and then eventually they 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 got a district they actually were taken to court and the two football players directly involved in the rapes received only one and two year prison sentences. Nope. One nope. of them has been released early on good behavior. Good but bitch please. Really? Really? Okay. Wow. No, not unless the only way I could accept that and I know this is horrible and you probably should not you know answer rape with more rape but only if he became Bubba's bitch for the entire time he was in there and yeah. understands completely and fully that rape is a horrible thing they'll just get out and do it again probably I mean I, I hate to you know be like that but if you do have it once you'll probably do it again especially if you're being slapped on the wrist basically and you're yeah. getting out a little bit really it's it's like that kid in I think what was it Oklahoma that run down got drunk and run down a whole bunch of people and what did he get probation community service never mm -hmm. mind that he killed four fuckers in, <sighs> in a drunken stupor you know. I, I I have to say this uh, I I I am a football fan and uh, we actually have I my my team is the Pittsburgh Steelers. And we actually, our quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger, he was charged with rape. And I don't condone it whatsoever. I, I, I have a hard time reconciling being a fan of the team and, and, and still in, and, and with him and what he did on it. Cause I, I, I hate what Ray Lewis did and he got off of the hook with he's with the, the, the Ravens and well, was he retired, but, and still I am a fan of, uh, of the Steelers with the Ross Le Roethlisberger that it's really hard to reconcile being a fan of them. And they, I don't like Roethlisberger at all for what he did. And I think it's mm -hmm. terrible. And if it could be any other way, if they could be without him, that'd be great. But yeah, I don't condone it whatsoever. Cause a lot of people who listen, they know me and know that I am a fan of the Steelers and that we have Roethlisberger. So yeah, I, I like to just say yeah, I don't condone it at all. Right. I don't care if you're a football player. I don't care if you're a college ball player, high school. I, I pro. I don't care. It's not okay, and you shouldn't get away with it just because you have you're a footballer or because you have money to get the hell out of it. Exactly, and I in fact I even remember some of the things that were being said about these football players, like oh now that they. Now that this has happened, their futures are ruined and everything. What about the ruination of the future of the rape victim? That and they ruined it the, their damn selves. They didn't. They they weren't forced to rape anybody. No, they just decided. Oh, I want to. I want to fuck this person. Never mind what she says. You know, it, it's just no, 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 no. Ah, I mean, and. and to be honest and, be, and a little on the fair side, the fact that they got any kind of punishment in this case, considering their connections and the fact that the majority of this country gives more football head than they do man head, if that makes any sense. Mm. You know, no, I, I, you lost me on that one. I think I did. Point is, they love football more than blowjobs. Okay. <laughs> but especially, especially if you're in certain areas in the United States, Texas. Wait, this was in Ohio, right? Yes. Oh, dear God. This was out um, of Ohio. <laughs> I, I remember first hearing about it. I remember Brooke's reaction when she first heard about it. Needless to say, um, it's not quite as bad as a certain situation from MAGFest 2013, 20, 20, uh, but mm. she got up there. Mm. That, 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 to give you an idea of how rage-filled she was. And I agree with her. <laughs> Completely. Yeah. But the fact – but as I was saying, the fact that these guys got any sentence at all considering the attitude towards football and the support that these rapists got is pretty much a miracle in my eyes. 
basically anybody who sympathizes more with with you know rapists just because they're football players than the you know the actual person who got raped you can go fuck yourselves i'm sorry but that's fucked up it really is yeah and i would i would definitely try and say that you are part of the problem yeah and you're the reason why rape culture still exists so yes. pat yourself on the motherfucking back good job yes <laughs> uh, yeah uh. so now the hacker uh derek Lostutter, i think that's how you pronounce it he is one of the hackers involved with the face in the football team's website and he could face up to 10 years behind bars 10 years for hacking a high school footballers web football team's website you know okay maybe hacking the website you know you know, yeah. What you if you know if it's illegal, it's illegal. Should there be some kind of punishment? Sure, for just on basic principle. But given given the events that have happened and what they did and the reasons behind the hacking, I would say if you're going to punish the hacker or hackers that have stepped forward, go lenient on them because they exposed a far more horrible crime, and they and they basically strong arm justice however little, into being taken, or served, rather. Jeez. You know? So yes, while the hacking arguably is illegal, it's not as illegal as fucking multiple rape. Do you think that there should be, there should be limits? On, like, do you think that there should be hacking for the good of something? Oh yeah, definitely. Because I think so too. Because it's definitely possible. Like, there, I mean, I'm sure there should be some way to be, there should be some way for it to be regulated, but seriously, this, really? Yeah. Oh, hmm. Jesus Christ. Now, here's the thing. Lost Stutter was not directly involved in hacking the team's website, but he does admit to being the masked man in the hacker's video, which, as this article states, is a small crime, like I said, compared to repeatedly raping another human being. But when they arrested him, there was approximately, according to this article, 12 FBI SWAT team agents you know, jumping out of a truck, screaming at him to get the fuck down with M16 assault rifles and full riot gear, armed safety off, pointed at his head. Wait, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Quote from the kid, approximately 12 FBI SWAT team agents jumped out of the truck, screaming for me to get the fuck down with M16 assault rifles and full riot gear, armed, safety off, pointed directly at my head. Are you... Are... For hacking! Nice no, to know not... that the okay. FBI is doing something for something so fucking useless when they can't do their actual job. Really? Okay. Newsflash to the FBI and the NSA. I know you're listening. Hi. Here's a little bit of advice. Most hackers are people that probably would look like all three of us. They're overweight, they're not very physical, and odds are they're not going to be a physical threat to you. You don't need 12 FBI SWAT teams, 12 SWAT team agents with assault rifles, no safety, with full riot gear. You don't need that. For a ha Wow. Just, no. Do you no. see why I, I have no faith and I I just don't I I thought that my local my local police force was bad, but the FBI really slow ca slow clap for the useless ones. Yeah, I'm not even giving them a slow clap. You can't see it, but they're getting double burned. No, I I there should be more. Yeah. <laughs> well well it's like it's like it's like we used to do, you know, we would flip up a bird to one another. Somebody would come in and flip up two birds, you know, mine's better. And then somebody would flip two birds and then say, use your imagination for the third. They have a flock of fucking seagulls for them. Yes. <laughs> uh, complete with haircut. Yes. Mm. But in this, and in, in I, I do like this guy's resolve, though. In the true spirit of civil disobedience, the law, law stutter welcomes his sentence. He, they're going to have to lock me up if I think I ain't going to stand up for some people ever again, he said in an interview with Rolling Stone. So fuck that. Good for him. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, still bullshit that, it's ha that this has happened, but go die in a fire. Yes. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> to the kid, FBI, that is. <laughs> uh, this, this kid, no matter what, you know, after 10 years, he's, he's still, he would do it again. And you know what? I, I don't know if he's listening, but 
but uh, um, Derek Lostutter. You are awesome. awesome, and yeah, I totally back you up. That yes. that shit's awesome. Ha- we hacking are for the good. That's what she said. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's probably not a good thing to say in a case like this. I apologize. Oh. That was in bad taste. Ah. Oh, I've oh. had worse, I'm sure. <laughs> Unintentionally. Yeah. It may yeah. be intentionally, depending on who it is. Oh but... my god, Gomer. <laughs> oh, so yeah. And to continue on with rape culture, and it, it's not just this particular case with Steubenville and the uneven... You know, the uneven prison sentences for everybody involved. Although I would still argue that, you know, the person who should have gotten the slap on the wrist would be Lost Utter. But it is what it is. I hate to have to accept it, but I'm going to. I don't like it. But um, what's worse is there are people in power that want to – I'm, I'm going to say want to enforce rape culture even more. You, you you have the loonies up there that want to push the biblical values, and we know it's biblical. Cause, oh God! Because they must see... sorry. Yeah, because they 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 want to, you know, they don't want to follow anybody else's religion, but they expect everybody uh, to follow theirs. Do I see the name Ken Cuccinelli? Please tell me I don't see the name Ken Cuccinelli. You do, but he is not the focus of this article. Oh thank God! <laughs> <laughs> no, the focus of this article is. State Senator Richard H. Dick Black, which, <laughs> oh my god, what, really? Some <laughs> amazing names today. That is just, wow. wow. Richard H. Black. Uh, what, does, what does the H stand for, Henry? Richard Who cares? H. Black. <laughs> I don't know. That's terrible. Just, oh my god. Wow. <laughs> Terribly awesome. <laughs> And he's so white, too, which makes it even funnier. Yes. So, so white. <laughs> that reminds me of the big, bigger, blacker dick card in Cards Against Humanity. Exactly. <laughs> which we always play when, when Kanye West is, you know, oh, present. Dear. Oh, dear. Oh, so the headline for this particular one, and I found this one on uh, MotherJones.com, by the way, for those, you know, take it for what it's worth or what have you. GOP congressional candidate. Spousal rape shouldn't be a crime. Oh. Right, because uh, according to this that guy, just pisses me off. It does, because it's like, you know, because according to this guy, and here's the scary part, he I'm pretty sure he is not the only guy, whether in power or out of power, who thinks this way. According to this guy, I should be able to marry either one of you, and once I do marry either one of you, I should be able to fuck you whenever I want, whether you want it or not. That's according to this guy. And I think all three of us can say a big, hearty, healthy, fuck no. Yeah. It's funny, because I'm, I said I saw the name Ken Cuccinelli. I'm pretty sure he's one of those guys who feels the same way as this guy. He probably does, because wasn't he one of the... Wasn't Cuccinelli one of the guys wanting to bring back sodomy laws? Yes. In Virginia? Yeah. Actually, I thought sodomy laws were still in existence in Virginia. Oh, and that only that only the only sex that was uh, that was legal was missionary position in the dark, with clothes on. I don't know about clothes. Well, I don't know about that the last part, but uh, I just I heard that the law was only a missionary position, and uh, and that uh, it that everything else was sodomy. Yeah, and and not just that you know, sex out of wedlock when you're not in a marriage. Oops. You, ooh, ooh. I mean, <laughs> and now, now to be fair, I believe the Supreme Court. I think it was the Supreme Court that ruled sodomy laws as unconstitutional. Yeah, but that doesn't matter to people to to uh, to governors and shit in Virginia. Trust me. Of course not. And yeah. and I and and I'm sure everybody has noted. I've noted it several times, but I'm noting it again that when a lot of these, admittedly, mostly Republican. Demo- not not Democrats, Republican politicians, and and to be fair, some Democrats probably do this too. When they say things like the will of the people, they mean they do mean people. Unfortunately, those people are the ones that are lining their pockets with more cash than I could see in, in my entire lifetime. And also, they really mean people that they when they say people, they mean men with money that white benefit them. Money. Rich white men, with rich white Christian conservative men. Yeah. So, yeah. That's the way the... God intended it. Right. <laughs> Jesus. So, yeah. 
So why why are, why are we why are we bashing on all of this? Why why are we what are we what did we do we this can. time? You know, this is what people will be asking. I'm sure. So Richard H. Black, he he is. Let's see. He took a drubbing in last year's state elections, and and well, let me just read the article where I can actually form words better. After taking a drubbing in last year's state elections, Virginia Republicans are debating whether their party has come to be defined by its extremists. Well, oh, please. Extremists, my ass. Just because they don't express the views doesn't mean they're not them. Come on. Yeah. Sorry, I hate my state. Yeah. and <laughs> I hate your state, too. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. I'm glad we can all agree here. <laughs> I'm not too fond of it. It's got pretty countryside, but... Uh. But then there's the Falwells and people who think like them. Sorry, yeah. continue. <laughs> but in a congressional district in northern Virginia, one of the state's main instigators of culture warfare, State Senator Richard H. Dick Black, <laughs> is running in the Republican primary to replace longtime GOP moderate Representative Frank Wolf, who is retiring. And he's guaranteed to ignite a wedge, w ignite wedge issue passion. Exhibit A, as a state legislature... Later, later, rather, legislator, I rented this tongue, Black opposed making spousal rape a crime, citing the impossibility of convicting a husband accused of raping his wife when they're living together, sleeping in the same bed, she's in a nighty, and so forth. This is insulting on two different levels. On the one hand, you're reducing a woman to nothing more than a hole, warm hole or cold hole, but you're reducing her to a hole, and you're also insulting men by insulting their intelligence and their own self-goddamn control. Here's my question. What if a woman tried to have sex with her husband and he didn't want to? Then what? Oh, it, mm, just... Mm. I I don't even know. What I, are you talking about? That doesn't happen. Oh, yeah, I'm that, sorry, because that, men that never always happens. want sex. My bad. Yeah. And, and women never do. So. I know, right? Ugh. Wow. We are such frigid witches. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but according to Toothmosis, you both are also sluts, too. You know what? Toothmosis, <laughs> yeah, figure well. fuck off. I agree. So, yeah. It, it, it's one of those things. I guess when you add it all together, when that just makes us, oh, normal human beings? There you go. Oh, noes. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. More to the standards of a perfect woman? Oh, noes. Oh, my. Only uh, being sluts on the days he wants to bang someone and nobody respectable will. Yeah, huh? My bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, there's always this phrase like "lady in the streets, slut in the sheets," or something like that, or variations yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah. It's and like, Moses, if you're listening, which there's a high probability that you are, again, go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. Yes, I do. Because you're the only one who's going to. Yeah, Toothmosis, if you're listening, right into the show, and then go fuck off. We'll read it on the air, even. <laughs> <laughs> I still, if he if he wants a debate, he's got it. There you go. We can do that. I, I would not. I would not be. I, I, I would not turn this down. But Black has also referred to emergency contraception, which does not cause abortions, as baby pesticide. <laughs> because yes, you're putting you're putting the same stuff on babies. I'm sorry, garden weeds. Baby uh... pesticide. <laughs> Okay, you know what that reminds but me of? because it doesn't end pregnancy, it can't be baby pesticide. Exactly. Because pesticide kills things that are already alive. Right. So, <laughs> what the so, fuck? So, yeah. <laughs> Logic, people. Do you know this, sir? For Vir you... Virginia Republicans, everyone. Yes. Uh, oh my god. Uh, this and... is what I have to deal with on a daily basis. And, and... I don't think I've ever said this on a show before. I may have, and just not have forgotten it. Keep in mind, altogether on my sh on between Thespian Talk and this show right here, I have done over 100 episodes of shows, you know, all together. So I may not have said it. I may have not remembered it. But if you're a moderate of any particular group, whether it's religious or political, that we talk about and we slam, speak up, and. You know, shout down these extremists we make fun of and poke at and get rageful at and everything else. And if you have something, to, if you're one of the extremists and you have something to say about it, why don't you engage in civil debate instead of yelling at us and proving our point even further? Exactly. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, the extremists that do that, you're not helping. I will say this. Uh, in 2008, uh, during the presidential election, before the presidential election, 
I worked for the Obama campaign and I was an extremist and I felt terrible about it because it was awful. I was I was a bulldog and it was it just it just proved the other side right. You were an Obama extremist? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm actually surprised they existed because and still I, I, going to Liberty University at the time. I actually worked for uh, I I was I was in the Obama campaign and I was going to Liberty University and I actually ran. And you're gonna laugh at this. LU students for Barack Obama. <laughs> and apparently that was, that was so allowed. unheard of that I I had media contacting me all the time. Actually, I'll actually have to pull it up for you guys later. Uh, Bloomberg actually called me and did like an hour long interview and sent out a photographer and everything. And like the the article's still up on Bloomberg's site. Oh, nice. Yeah, Wish local news, it. Bloomberg, like everything. But the the person who got most of the flack for being a liber- uh, Obama supporter of Liberty University was my former friend Maria, who was running a uh, uh, Liberty University College Democrats when Liberty University tried to quietly kick out the College Democrats because they didn't want it on their campus, and there was a whole shit storm, if you remember correctly. Uh, wow. Yeah, that was we'll, one we'll, of my friends. <laughs> we'll, we'll give you an education, but you gotta think like we do. Yeah. Hey. Oh, I think it's funny that Jerry Falwell, when he's alive, just said there was not a single liberal or moderate or socialist working on their cam- on their campus. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what right. you didn't know. Right. You know, maybe that's, maybe he realized that's what it was and that's what ended up killing him. No, it was all, it was the, it was the horrible, all the horrible food he ate and the exercise he didn't do. Um, (laughs) No, that's what it was. That is what it was. He had actually been hospitalized a year or two before for the same thing. Um, And it ended up just being, I think, angina. Um, That's kind of anticlimactic. Yeah, I know, right? It's too bad he didn't, you know... You know what? That's me. I'm not gonna... I, well, I could go there, but... Uh, <laughs> no, he actually said when he was alive, and he said a lot of conflicting things. One of my favorite things that he said that made me lull because his entire life was, you know, contrary to what he said. He's like, preachers are not called to be politicians, but soul winners. It's like, okay, so <laughs> how about what? every fucking complication? Yeah. Um, oh. also he said that if Liberty University ever became secular or like liberal or whatever, that he would want it, he wouldn't want someone to come back and torch the place. Wow. I'm not kidding. Mm. Jeebus. So. Yeah. You, yeah. These are things that he said and people can't be like, oh, you know, you're just misquoting him. No, I'm not. Go back and look at anything ever. Yeah. Because no matter how much you know, rich people or, or, or more affluent people want to erase certain things that they've done or said, it, it, we're in the age of the internet. It will always be there. Right. And I will yeah. say this. You, you post always... something once or you say it once in, in a public way and it's captured forever. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, I... all you have to do is look at the Steuben Vo case to see that. Yes. Right. You know, there's all of these tweets and you know, video clips and everything yeah. that, you know, they posted. And, and yeah, uh, you know, I know a lot of it has been deleted, but, but guess it's what? Still it's still there somewhere. It, it mm-hmm. still exists because people took screenshots. and Yeah, some people may have even downloaded it. Yeah, yeah. but that's just because you delete something doesn't mean that that's not still there somewhere. Right. But uh, the bad part about the Jerry Falwell shit is... Be, is uh, a lot of people don't believe this, but the, the Liberty University and the Falwells, they actually hold a fuck ton of political clout. Maybe not as much as when Jerry Falwell was alive, mm-hmm. but they own a fuck ton of political clout. They even weaseled their way in getting their own precinct for voting. Which is scary. Well, yeah, I mean, it's scary because of what that means for, you know, my city, especially. Mm-hmm. But it also, it, there was like one, maybe one good thing that came out of it. Uh, the polling locations used to be clogged the fuck up with voters. And basically, b- voters who were going and just voting for whoever had an R beside their name. Mm-hmm. And I, I may have told this this quick little blur before on here before, but just in case, I want to remind you, uh... 
my friend, uh, my friend at the time, Steve, I think it was the 2008 election. He said he went to the polling location and he had to wait for like two hours in line. And the, he, you know, just heard the conversation some chicks in front of him were having. And one of the girls turned to the other and said, oh, I forgot who I should vote for. And the girl actually said, don't worry. You just vote for whoever has the R beside their names. Oh, my God. Wow. I'm not even kidding you. And that's a sentiment here. And it's even that's easier That's illegal. Now. Oops. A, a little bit. No, um, no, it actually is because that is considered campaigning yeah. within a certain distance of a polling That's location. That's true. I remember so, that year you weren't even allowed to wear your, uh, your whatever, you know, your Obama or McCain stuff to the polling location. I remember that. But, uh, so now it's easier for them because you know on you know on Monday they can go uh, they you know, before elections they can go to convocation and you know whoever's speaking can really drive it home who to vote for because they have an R beside their name and then the next day they can just you know pop over to the polling location on campus and vote for whoever has an R beside their name because that's how you work that's yeah, how it works I mean it was like somebody on two cents like years ago when it was like. Bush and, and I think it was Kerry or whatever it was. They oh, were discussing. Yeah. They were discussing the mindset of some people, um, uh, like like their their voting habits. And I think it was Auburn, the co-host at the time, just just made the just brought up the idea of people voting because they like ours. So we're gonna vote for ours because I like ours. Oh wow! <laughs> oh. That's the only presidential election since I've been able to vote that I did not vote in. I and voted in it. I just did not vote for either of the two big ones. It's because I went um, to go get my voter registration card, and by the time I'd gotten back to the polling location, which was like the front office of my apartment building. It was closed. She, just as I was walking up, the lady walks up and locks the door. Oh, damn. And I was pissed, because like, there was still a line inside. They were letting all of those people vote. Yeah. But I... Who showed up at exactly closing time was not allowed to go in. Yeah, that's a dick uh, move. And did they? Did this person have like a thing against you or something, or just, just not that did, I know of? Just, just cause. Yeah. yeah. And and this this most recent election, I wasn't able to vote in because well, for two reasons. One, I was on the road more constantly, and and getting to where it was, you know, not didn't really have a lot of cash on hand for the bus, which is not. Which would not be the main excuse, if not also for the fact that when I when you get your license in Indiana, it also doubles as your voter registration too. And yes. when they put me down for voter registration, they put down the wrong – I believe it was the wrong suffix because I am a tray. They put me down as a junior. Yeah. Oh. Oops. I was like, you idiots. Man, that sucks. Yeah. Especially like in elections, like like in two thousand eight and two thousand twelve, mm -hmm. those are important elections. And uh, yeah. especially here, where I live in a swing state, yeah, which is funny if you're yeah. Thinking see, something else. I've been living <laughs> in Illinois, which is definitely not. So it was like it wasn't a huge deal that I didn't get to vote because my state went to, you know, the Democrats anyway. Well, yeah, yeah but because... but it is sort of funny in that you know, right? Illinois is well known for um, its illegal voting practices, and yeah, this woman was super diligent about the rules. Yeah, <laughs> wow. but like, but geez. it is important for you to be able to vote in Florida, Gomer, because yes. definitely a big, big, big. Big, big deal. state, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Virginia, uh, yeah, it's Virginia, Ohio, Florida, New Jersey. What are the other ones? I don't even remember. There's a few more. I want to say California's one. Maybe. Um, I don't know. California is a big state to win, but it's not really considered a, a swing state because of, you know, all of Southern California. Yeah. And true. Okay. But definitely states like here that, you know, have a big Republican concentration and yeah. Uh, oh. There's that. But we should probably get back to the story yes, that we were yes. talking about. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. It's okay. Speaking of Republicans, going back to Mr. Black, who is very, very white. He also fought to block a statue of Abraham Lincoln at a former Confederate site in Richmond. He wasn't sure, he explained at the time, that statues of Lincoln belonged in Virginia. What? 
Oh, God. Are you fucking... They didn't dumb? belong in Virginia? Like, is there a reason? Does he have a... Is there a reasoning behind that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it has to do with the war between the states. Because... Which, by the way, I live 20 minutes from Appomattox, the surrender site. Ooh, it's nice. Where go, it's where to go to watch roller derby. Okay, you know what? It, when I come and visit you at some point in the future, I want to go there. Yeah. Okay. That's because... work. Because I, I do I do like studying and looking at uh, stuff Historical around the Civil stuff. War. Historical stuff. Oh yeah. So yeah. do I. I'm like a lot of people don't know this, but I'm a big history geek. So there's that. Yeah. And by the way, I'm related to Thomas Jefferson by blood and marriage. Sweet. Yeah. So yes. <laughs> but Lincoln apparently is persona non grata in Virginia. Okay. Yeah, because you know. Because Black said so. Oh yeah. Or, or or he fought to block it. I I don't think it actually was blocked. Well, well, let's let's well we can go to the former Confederate site in Richmond and see if there's a statue there. Yeah. If there is, then well, obviously it didn't work. I love Richmond, by the way. It's a good city, and there's lots to do there. And I saw Kevin Smith there in August, and it was awesome. Yay! <laughs> so, he's also argued that abortion is a worse evil than slavery. Oh hell no! Nah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell nah. So basically, hell? mistreating unborn things is worse than the tr no. Uh uh. No. Fuck this guy. Yeah, and once he should change his last name, by the way, for that reason. Yeah, and once to demonstrate why libraries should block pornography on their computers, Black invited a TV reporter to film him using a library terminal to watch violent rape porn. To, to be fair, I, I don't disagree with him on that one. Me right. neither. You I know, it, it, as much as I'm all about, you know, a free and open internet, if you're using it in a place that also has children in it, then no. Yeah, that, yeah that in is my not private library, funny. you were able to I am, even. But porn, really? Yeah, it, it's, you know, you know, public places... You know things that are more public. Sure, you have blockers on it, where where you should be able to watch it is in your own home, or on your own connection if you have one of those portable hotspots. Especially if you're like everybody else and doing certain things while you're watching said porn. Yeah, that's unless you're putting it into your mental uh, uh, wank bank. <laughs> uh... Some people do both. Yeah. Oh. In 1998, Black was elected a delegate to the Virginia House, and he sparked multiple battles over social issues until he was voted out of office in 2005. But in 2011, after moving several times around northern Virginia in search of a friendly district, he was voted back into legislature, this time to the state senate. So this guy, this guy, he was saying spousal rape shouldn't be a crime, wants, wants to tell people how to run their lives. He, he wants I, to do this. I hate to go back, but I, I can't stop asking myself this question. So he goes into a library and looks at violent rape porn. Mm -hmm. How did he know how to find it? He probably found it. He probably could figure out how to find it the same way most other people could figure out how to find it. Type he heard it on the street, porn. yo. Yeah. Oh, God. He probably just Googled it. No, he heard it on the street, yo. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, I universe, was but, the same thing. Uh, no, well, no, I'm like, sorry, universe. Um, but, you know, to any government agency that may be listening to this podcast, uh, this is purely for scientific, scientific purposes. I'm going to Google it to see if it brings up a result. Oh, my oh, God. It will. It's Google. They'll have and now it. the FBI is going to swarm your house. <laughs> And with oh. twelve SWAT, with twelve SWAT team members, yes, telling you to stand down because FBI okay, yeah. If you look up, I'm not going to click any of the links, but yeah. But there are results for there. It. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh damn. Yeah. See, Google. You can find just about damn near anything. Oh, except maybe you know Mr. Black's dick. I don't know. Oh my God! No, stop! <laughs> no. Well. No, no, God, no. Well, he probably doesn't even really have much of one if he has one at all. <clears throat> yeah. Well, unless, never mind. I'm not even gonna go there. Yeah. I'm not even. I'm just gonna shut up now. It's called overcompensation. 
Yeah, if he has to prove a point about violent rape born, I, I'm hardcore, yo. Let's just Ugh. let me say that <laughs> he probably has some issues. Yeah, so do a lot of these politicians that that are of his ilk. Maybe that's why he's watching violent rape born because he can't ra- currently rape his wife. Yeah, because she ain't gonna put mm-hmm. up with it. For one thing, she don't I care think, about a big old yeah. black dick. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. Hmm. Or a shriveled, tiny, dilapidated Cheeto dick. But yes. anyway. <laughs> Cheeto, dick. Cheeto dick. That's I have to say, I haven't heard that one before. Uh, me neither. I, t- I say it about John Cena all the time because, you know, steroids. Oh, yeah. dear. <laughs> yeah, I, and, and, and tan. Yeah. Oh, so they they give a little bit more history and background oh, of what oh what God. He is. Sorry, my brain just won't shut off today. So then I started thinking about you know self tanning, and you know how it will turn your hands a nasty color if you full token orange. Yeah, if you're yeah. not careful about how you do it because you have a lot of dead skin on your hands and somebody yeah. should have told that to but, John Boner. Oh right. So I'm thinking like. What if you self tan and then you then you masturbate? You you really would have a Cheeto dick. Oh, and, then, oh. and also and then it'll also look like you have leprosy. Of that. <laughs> so you get dilapidated Cheeto dick, Hulk Hogan <laughs> orange skin, and leprosy. Ouch. <laughs> that sounds like some weird uh, niche porn. Uh, oh. Oh yeah. So, I, we should call that the annoying orange porn. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Well, I'm going to stop talking now. <laughs> I, I am not Googling that because there are some things that I don't want to know exist. Probably Maybe. Tumblr. Probably Tumblr. <laughs> oh, God. Because yeah. that's where Tumblr is where everything goes to get weird. Yes. That and fanfiction.net. Yes, <clears throat> definitely. So, um, so Black, he entered politics in the late 90s after retiring as a military prosecutor. He spoke frequently to media outlets about sexual assault in the military, and he called military rape as predictable as human nature. Think of yourself at 25, he told the newspaper in 96. Wouldn't you love to have a group of 19-year-old girls under your control, day in, day out? Not yeah, because that's, that's how the armed forces work. It's a dude in front of a, or in charge of a group of women. Oh in wait! In charge of jazzercise. No. No, it's it's it's. Because yeah, there still aren't that many women in the armed forces. Uh, it's still a majority men. There are women in there. I almost joined the military. That happened. Yeah, I mean, oh, just wow. But as predictable as human nature. Really? So this guy has issues. If you, so, if you're a woman and you go into the military, you should expect to be raped. No, yeah. you should because basically you're asking for it by joining the military with a bunch of dudes. Right. You knew it was gonna happen. So, so basically, so I, maybe Tooth Moses should put that on his list for a fifty-first uh, uh, tells uh, <laughs> slut tells. <laughs> basically, if you join the military, you're you a slut. You join the military. Yes. Because you're gonna be all around all them dudes, and you're just asking for it. Yes, and if you put yep. it on there, you better credit us, credit us, motherfucker. Yeah. You better credit us. I want credit, damn it. Yeah. Well, okay, that... well give it to Misha. She's the one who came up to me. Then send all your hate mail to Misha Mayhem. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, send it all to Gomer. It's all his fault. <laughs> He's the one who asked me to be on this show. It's all his fault. <laughs> Holly did nothing. She's innocent. Just yeah. Gomer. Yeah. Okay. He's... So, so they, they they also go on about his whole blocking pornography on library computers thing. The move drew national attention. First Amendment litigation against the Ludden County Library struck down Black's restrictions and went up costing the county $100,000. During that time period, the librarians say they only ever received one complaint about porn on their computers, which was against Black, when he pulled up his rape (laughs) pornography stunts. Oh my god! Oh, yes. (laughs) So... Goes to prove that most people are intelligent. Yes. I love, I love how people... And have the ability to control themselves. Yeah. I I mean, even when I did not have a a reliable internet access for a little while when I had to go down to the local Starbucks, which was right across the street from a library, both of which had internet access, 
I didn't really look up porn or or, or, or anything but, like that. It's just no. <laughs> no, I mean I mean I understand I'm in a public place. I'm not gonna do that. I'll I'll watch reviews of porn. Uh, the old thank you, Brad Jones, but I won't watch porn itself, you know. Yeah, so this guy basically has some hang up about porn and wouldn't made an issue out of a non issue. Yeah. Well, because he doesn't <laughs> like think a lot people of the control themselves. Men in the military can't control themselves. You know. Because they're men. People with internet connections in public places can't control themselves. Yeah. Which, which, interestingly enough, if you go to Triple X Porn, I think it's, I want to say it's Triple X uh, Church or something like that. Yes. Com, and they, they actually have a test where you can take um, to see if you're addicted to internet porn or whatever, or just porn in general. Yes, and then it gives you support groups to go to if you, yeah. have, you have an addiction. They talked to, Kevin, uh, Kevin Roos talked about that in um, The Unlike the Disciple, because they have a chronic masturbators group on Liberty's campus. Yeah. Like a support group. And it's like, I, I have a feeling if you answer yes to any of those questions, because they're all yes, no questions. You don't yeah. get degrees, you don't, you don't get, you know, you don't get to talk to somebody and tell them, yeah, this was true a while ago how it is now, that sort of thing. And I answered honestly, you know, because I want to get the most accurate representation. And then your computer is self-destructive because, like, like in the Spectre Gadget? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I, rebuild it. I spent all of last night rebuilding it. <laughs> go, go, gadget, porn computer. There you go. But, um, but no, I, I answered honestly, and it, it wasn't, it wasn't like all yeses down the side, no. I mean, there are some of them, like, one of the questions was, have you had sex with somebody under, like, 18 or 17 or something like that? And I was like, no. So wait, that tells you... They well, I have, but I was also under the age of 17. Right. And so it's, the, like, uh... Why is that, is that an indicator of whether or not I... Yeah. Watch the porn. Yeah, I know, right? That's like, stupid. And, it's, and, it's a slippery slope. I just love how Christians overgeneralize. Overgeneralize because if you're one into one thing, you're obviously into another. Kind of like you know how gay marriage leads to bestiality. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that. Oh, there was one argument I saw earlier that that was that somebody was saying that you know with the whole gay marriage thing. I think it was Louis Gohmert. I want to say who needs to change his name because it sounds too much like mine, and he's an asshole. But um, I think it was I think it was that guy arguing that gay same sex marriage shouldn't shouldn't be you know a natural thing or whatever or shouldn't be a thing because then you would have fathers you know marrying their sons on their deathbeds for for uh, for abusing loopholes for I think what? benefits or whatever and and I'm like no somebody else pointed out that you know there's if that loophole is there then it also would work for between a daughter father and daughter for one thing and for another thing that would only work in Alabama. <laughs> and now I'm going to get letters from Alabama. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm pretty sure most states that have, you know, laws against marrying people that you're, related you know, to, yeah. related to, uh, you know, up to a certain degree. It's like, in yeah. a lot of states, I think you can marry your your first cousin, but you can. They that's, the, that's the closest it gets. Yeah. 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 But, oh, man. It disturbs me that they no longer do the blood tests, but I guess they decided it was too expensive. Instead, that people can have kids that have, you know, four uh, four extra toes. I've I've never actually looked up why, because I don't think I have ever lived in a state that requires a blood test. What what is the blood test for? To make sure I'm pretty sure. Like it. Been, I, well, because I'm pretty sure they've been doing blood tests for marriage licenses before. They did, DNA, but, they, but yeah, but now, but now it's not it's not required in certain states like here. When I got when I wouldn't apply for my marriage license, it wasn't required. Yeah, oh. I guess like I said, maybe it got too expensive, and they decided that you know instead it'd be cheaper for kids to have, or for for couples to have kids that have extra limbs and toes and stuff and many more nipples than they should. <laughs> yeah, and. Since we're okay, I just looked it up. By the way, uh -oh. um, it it doesn't have anything to do about if you're related or not. Really? It's, it's so you um, <laughs> you don't spread um, venereal disease. Um, oh bullshit! Namely, Seriously? syphilis. 
Right, because, you know, most couples wait until marriage to have sex anymore. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. They don't even wait to have sex with, with somebody else. In anyway, um, yeah. that's between them and their, their, their relationships. But no, I was told, I, I hear it was for that, the, the whether or not you're related thing. Yeah. That's okay. Maybe that's a secondary reason, but I was always told it was because of, you know, whether or not it was for whether or not you were related. Yeah. I don't know. Which I yeah, no, I, I looked that. it up and it was, it's, you know, several states were listed in, first of all, syphilis is the, the primary mm-hmm. um, thing, but then some states also tried to enact uh, legislation for testing for HIV. Yeah. Which, you know, there's always a scare and that's always around too, which, you know, which a lot of it can be just taken out with just safer sex. But or so, reduced. what if they, so if they found it then, like if they found that one of the people did have HIV or a boy, syphilis or whatever, they can't get a marriage license? Yep. Wow. Or you, wow. Uh, you have to get treated before you can. I mean, that's safe, know, syphilis but it's is also easily treatable. Yeah. It's, 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 it's safe, but it's also not their choice. Yeah. It, yeah, there's a thing. Yeah, I, I have to agree. Safety? Sure. I can agree with that. But you're also infringing upon, you know, two people's pursuit of happiness, the right to marry each other and be happy with each other. Right. If and... there's if they're in typically it's gonna be a monogamous marriage anyway. So it's not like they're gonna necessarily go out and fuck other people. Some do <sighs> but I would say if you you know, when you take that test and you know this, then Perhaps the people who are entering into the marriage, even if one of them ends up cheating, will will have that little thing in their mind that says, hey, wait a minute. My wife and I are, are, are incubators for this horrible, horrible disease. We need to be careful, and thus maybe at that point the desire to cheat will go down a little bit because they don't want to spread this around. Yeah, my question is this too. Doesn't that also start dipping dangerously close into eugenics? Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, well, because the in New York, the only reason they do blood tests still is for um, sickle cell anemia in African American and Hispanic American applicants. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. Wow. So yeah. that's there. You're talking about, you know. A condition that is, you know, not preventable by practicing safe sex. So, yeah. Jesus. But, uh, so yeah. So one last thing. We're we're running low on time. We have one last thing from Mr. Black that I wanted to bring up. Was during the 1999 massacre at Columbine High School, it, it inspired Mr. Black to suggest legislation requiring Virginia students to address their teachers as ma'am, sir, mister, miss, or missus because, he explained, the counterculture of the 70s took the war into the classroom. Before that time, public schools were a model of decorum. And then we began this thing we've seen play out at Columbine. So, school what? shootings would stop if you... Dr- no. No. Fuck if that you- guy. If you showed more respect for teachers, I don't Hold really, them, ma'am. And no, uh, uh-uh. uh. Did this guy even pay attention to the reason why those kids shot up the school? Like, Apparently how about not. they pay more attention? How about they pay more attention to I don't know. Uh, instead of you know the students paying them respect, how about them paying students respect and taking bullying seriously? What? I'm sorry. Am I making sense again? Yeah, you yeah. gotta stop doing that. I know people hate uh, that shit. They do, especially when it's when it's one of those guys that thinks you should be allowed to rape your wife at will, ad nauseum, <sighs> and you know to to the most horrible points. And and it's guys like this that are in charge that really scare the fuck out of me at at certain points. These rape apologizing, rape culture spreading assholes. And it's well, not just the men; the women do it too. I've seen women. Well, yeah, do. because they they have to be proper proper ladies for these these backward thinking assholes. Yeah, they're like straight. They they spend so much time being apologists for all the bullshit in the Bible that they apply it to everyday life too, where it should never be applied. Right, people like Michelle Bachman and Sarah Palin. No, 
fucking Michelle Bach. And her husband, I'm sorry, hella gay. Hella, hella, hella gay. <laughs> That's the rumor. When, when, yeah, when they passed uh, gay marriage in Minnesota, they were like, so, Michelle yeah, Bach, where's that. her husband tonight? Yeah. Tell me with Todd Palin. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Oh, dear. So, yeah, in, in short, we, we, we did a bit, a bit of rambling along other topics this week, but to kind of sum up everything, you know, rape culture, unfortunately, is still a big, big issue. And as long as people, as long as it's still a big, big issue, as long as it's still a big, big thing deep in our societal culture and everything, then we need to talk about it. We need to call it out. You know, even if all you do is just post a link to a story on Twitter or Facebook or something and type out a a big old rant about it, if you have a radio show that you do, call it out on there, you know? Well, well, as long as you, if it's a current events news show. But, you know, you maybe could tie it into something else. I mean, I'm sure there are ways I could probably tie it into the Port Charlie podcast, which is no, which is nowhere near a current events show. <laughs> but you, you, could, you, you can tie it in at some point somehow, I'm sure. But uh, you know, keep the conversation going. Whenever you see things like Steubenville happen, or or even Merrillville, Merrillville, Missouri, which is one I didn't put in here for this week, but all that bullshit that was going on too, similar situation to uh, Steubenville. Although in in Maryville's case, I believe they burned down the rape victim's house after they left, which just makes oh, them, yeah that yeah which makes them look even worse. So <clears throat> so yeah, so yeah, uh, keep it keep it keep it up, keep talking about it, and maybe somebody somewhere will get the idea that this needs to fucking change. Well, okay, more people in more places will get the idea that this needs to fucking change. And then maybe it'll reach somebody that, you know, is a higher up and who can actually evoke change. But, but at the same time, I want to say this. People keep on saying somebody should do something about this, somebody should do something about that. But the people saying that don't realize, and they need to realize it, that they are someone. And just because they might not be able to affect it directly doesn't mean that they can't evoke change and affect something indirectly. Exactly. And I admit I've fallen into that trap myself. I'm sure we all have. We're we're all human, and that's something we all need to remember. So if you follow me on social media, if you follow me anywhere else on any other show, and you see me falling into that trap, point me back to this show. To yep. this point right here. Yeah, call it the bullshit. Me, yes. Point me back to this and remind me, hey, asshole, you can do something. You are somebody. So, yep. you know. So, yeah. And, and, and in fact, play this for your friends who, who get into similar situations. So uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and get out of here for this week. And when we come back next week, uh, we are going to talk about net neutrality because that also happened this week. But yeah. uh, we kind of Ooh. ran out of time for that, <laughs> unfortunately. Hey, talking about GOP D bags is even more fun, I think. Yeah, and 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 yes, both both do need to be talked about at length, ad nauseum until oh, things yeah. change. So, so you know, everything needs to go. And and interestingly enough, GOP ass hattery and everything, it, it does kind of play into net neutrality a little bit too. Uh, and I'm gonna say this next week, by the way. Mm-hmm. That is why it is so important that you get out and vote for every vote there is. Yes. That's yep. why it's important that when you are not voting and your Congress people are voting, that you call them and tell them what you want them to vote. Yep. Yes. And because if you keep saying that your that's vote what they doesn't do. matter, it does matter. Because if so many people say, if, if everybody thought like you and said, my vote doesn't matter, my vote doesn't matter, and they don't vote either, then shit stays the same. And you... I mean, you really have no reason to explain about it if you're not trying to go out there and change it yourself. Like, yeah. strengthen yeah. numbers, bitches. Strengthen yeah. the numbers. And even if you can't vote for whatever reason, like in my case, you know, I, I've still got to get things. I, I, I'm not sure about red switching over to Florida because as soon as I can, I'm getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> right. But, I mean, but, it's the trouble. Yeah. The point being, though, even if you can't vote, like I said with last election, you know, with the registration being all fucked up as it was. Still, you can still talk to other voters and you can help convince them, hey, this is what needs to be done. 
you know, this is where it needs to go. This is where you younger people can come in. If you're younger people, like 17, younger, can't vote, but you still want to enact some change, you have a voice too. You can use it. You can't vote yet legally, but you might be able to influence other people who are voting. That includes your Congress people. That includes your parents, your teachers. You your know, friends. So, yeah. So if you can't vote, at the very least, speak out and make your voice heard. Maybe you will convince somebody to go the way that you that you want to fight the for the current for the direction to go. I, I you guys know what I mean. I'm wording poorly. <laughs> but just don't be a dick about it and make your case correctly. Don't do like I did in 2008 and be a bulldog about it because no one wants to listen to you yelling about your side. Exactly. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> I was wrong, but I'm so glad the outcome of the outcome. So yeah. there's that. <laughs> there you go. So with all of that, we're going to take off for this week. If you want to find me on social media, you can find me at gomer 21 xx on Twitter. You can also find my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. And don't forget, I do have the Patreon page also at double gomer 21 xx Again, I really need to get out of here because I am starting to word poorly again. <laughs> He's list dexic today. Yes, he is. Uh, so um, so uh, Holly, where can we find you? You can find me all over the internet, you know, Twitter, Tumblr, everything. Uh, GookyGox, G-O-O-K-Y-G-O-X. You can also find my Facebook fan page, Holly Christine Brown. And go to my Etsy shop and, and buy some of my stuff. And that's yeah. gookygox.etsy.com. Sweet. And you can all end if you happen to be listening to this on my site, rtgomer.com. Look at the top of the page under Buy Our Stuff. You can click it there, too. It's all pretty stuff, and I have her earrings, and they're awesome. Yes. Yay. She does Yay. really great stuff. And where can we find you, Misha? I can be – my work is also – I write articles on Gomer's site, obviously, and I am on Space Monkey Mafia Studios, Snarkast, Stark Sports, Bacon Strippers, um, hopefully writing there soon for sports. Um, those all have uh, Twitter pages. Look them up, um, including SMMS. And my personal Twitter is Misha underscore Mayhem. And my Tumblr is Misha Mayhem 84. Sweet. So thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next week when we talk about net neutrality. And until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine and Misha Mayhem signing off. Bye. Bye, guys. This show is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.